Hi everyone, welcome, happy Monday. I'm so glad to see you guys here. So many people in the chat today, people want to learn about tomatoes. I'm so excited to share our live stream today. It's all about how to grow lots of tomatoes. I think tomatoes are probably one of the most popular vegetable. I know they're one of my very favorite vegetables to grow and I think they are for you guys too. And if you've never grown tomatoes before, you are missing out because the taste of your very own homegrown tomato is absolutely nothing like anything you've ever tasted before. I mean, the grocery store tomatoes, to me, taste like cardboard. And when I don't have tomatoes in my own garden, it's really, really hard for me to bring myself to buy tomatoes at the store, even if the organic ones. The taste just doesn't compare. So I wanna welcome you guys. Happy Monday, hope you had a great weekend. I wanna thank so many of you for joining us on our Friday um, live stream, our Fireside Friday. We did right over here behind me. It was such a fun time. We did a 300, thousand uh subscriber youtube celebration a lot of you played cali kim trivia won a lot of really great prizes smart pots was there and was able to give away a lot of smart pots my seed collections and books and be patient with you be patient with me guys a lot of you emailed me um your contact information those of you that won over the weekend my inbox is absolutely flooded so it's going to take me some time to go through that hopefully i'll get your prizes sent out to you by the end of the week so let me see who's here today before we get into our five tips to grow lots of tomatoes and a lot of basic information about growing tomatoes and max out here with me today come here mac i don't know if i can uh here here he is you guys want to say hi to him mac come say hi here he is joining me today. So great to have you guys. And let's see who is here today. Uh, let's see, Heart of Tabby, hello, welcome. I wanna welcome any new live stream um, viewers today. So Heart of Tabby, I don't think I've seen you on here before. So welcome, glad you're here. Randy DeShane, glad to see you. Irene, how are you? Andrea, always watching from Denmark. Thank you so much. Oh, Megan's on. Hi, Megan, it's great to see you. She just started gardening as well. And her um, her little seedlings are looking absolutely amazing. Rena, hi, Kim from Las Vegas. How are you doing, Rena? Rosa from Yukaipa on a cold day. And Matthew, a cool day in SoCal. Yes, it is. It's a little bit cool here today. It's probably around, I don't know, maybe in the mid 60s, but we are in for a really early heat wave this week. So I'm a little bit nervous about that. And we are gonna be shooting a video, um, hopefully tomorrow, on how to prepare for an unexpected heat wave. So if you live here in SoCal, make sure you stay tuned for that because it's supposed to get in the 90s by the end of the week. It's absolutely crazy. KT, hi from Australia. Great to have you on here. I love to see um, international viewers on. Andrea from Canada, uh, Brooke from San Antonio, and I'm sure you deal with a lot of heat down there. Inna Green from Manchester, UK. This, this is awesome, so exciting. Nancy, hello. Lots of Nancy's on here, another Nicole. Hi, Nicole, Nicole's on here every week. Mickey Cardenas, I am new. Welcome so much, Mickey. Mikey, I am so glad you're here. Um, you're, you're like a, sorry, from Sweden. And Nellikins, the loofah lady from Boston. And I got some loofah seeds planted yesterday, Nellikins. So I know they're gonna grow um, super, super fast. So thank you guys so much for joining me today. Let's get right into our tomato tips. First of all, I wanted to share with you guys that this plant behind here, I am just in love with this plant. It's called a um, yellow patio choice tomato. And some of you have heard me talk about All America Selections um, varieties before on my channel. So basically those are grown in test gardens. And then um, the winner of the, in the tomato category, for example, um, they're judged. And then the winners are called All America Selections winners. And they are very productive plants. And some of them are disease resistant, pest resistant. This is a really adorable little variety. Um, you can see here, it's like a container um, patio type variety and just absolutely loaded down with tomatoes already. So we're gonna be harvesting some of those this week. And then this one right here is the Tiny Tim, which a lot of you guys are growing as well. You know, that's one of my favorites. That's in my um, container, uh, my small space um, container garden collection. And it is one of my favorites as well. It's a great little container plant. So we'll do more on that in just a moment, but let's jump into our very first tip. Or no, actually what I wanna share first is some tomato basics for those of you that are brand new to growing tomatoes. 
A couple basic things that you might want to know is that they're warm weather vegetables. Um, they don't grow well in cooler temperatures. They really grow best when the temperatures are somewhere in between, I'd say 60 degrees on up to 85 or 90 degrees Fahrenheit in the higher range. So um, they really like those um, mild uh, nighttime temperatures in the 50s and 60s. And then once it gets above 80 or 90, um, they kind of tend to slow down a little bit. So ideal in the summertime, in the springtime, get them going. Over wintertime, sometimes we can grow them as long as we don't get a frost. And this one's actually been growing here uh, since around September, I believe. Had no frost this year in Southern California, so I was really lucky to be able to grow a couple of tomatoes. So they like um, full sun. If you can get them in six to eight hours of sunlight a day, they're gonna do really, really well. Some of the smaller varieties though, like the uh, Tiny Tim and the container, the Yellow Patio Choice, will grow well in less sun. So if you have a spot in your garden that's kind of shady, maybe you have a patio or a balcony, you don't have a lot of sun, I would recommend that you pick a variety of tomatoes that's more of a cherry type tomato like the one right behind me here um, or a dwarf tomato plant like this one here and you'll be amazed you can still get some tomatoes off of it it might not be as many as you get in a really nice sunny area but you can still grow tomatoes even if you don't have a full eight hours of sunlight a day so there's two different types of tomatoes um, one type is called a determinant uh, type of tomato and basically what that means is it's usually a smaller kind of plant like this one here, um, the Patio Choice or the Tiny Tim. And what that means is it grows to a set height and then it produces its tomatoes um, from about a four to six week time period and then the plant dies. So that's your determinate tomato, good for containers, good for um, patios or balconies, or if you just have a small space to grow them in. And um, the other type, uh, as opposed to determinant, the next type of tomato is called indeterminate. Those are the big vining plants, six to eight feet tall. Um, they produce tomatoes over a very long growing season throughout the summer months. And then um, once the frost hits, um, they're done. So they're killed off by frost. So both both really great types of tomatoes to grow. You can also grow indeterminate tomatoes, although they are really large plants. You can grow them in containers, but you definitely want to pick a larger size container. I'd say maybe a 10, 15, or 20 gallon container. And of course, you guys know I love growing in smart pots. They grow really, really well in smart pots um, because of the fabric um, of the containers they don't get root bound so they're able to take up the nutrients and the water and you can grow larger size plants in the smart pots because the roots air prune so a really great way to grow tomatoes is in the fabric containers so a few little basics um, let me see if I missed anything on the basics oh what I wanted to mention too is a couple really good companion plants for tomatoes I've had a lot of questions lately about companion planting um, some good companion plants are basil I always love to plant basil near my tomatoes because number one, I think it just looks so pretty growing together. Um, it's said to make tomatoes sweeter. I don't know if that's actually the case, but um, it's nice to be able to harvest them together. So um, other companion plants would be basil, chives. I've got some really pretty chives growing right behind me here. And the flowers are just so pretty right now. Let me scooch over so you guys can see them. They're absolutely beautiful. Chives are, are a wonderful herb. Um, those are good companion plants. Um, nasturtiums, which you guys can see, I have a ton of nasturtiums right behind me onions and parsley. And the reason why these make really good companion plants is because they tend to repel um, the bugs that will attack tomatoes. So I actually saw this morning, I have a lot of bugs here on my chives, so I guess it's really working. Let me see if I can find, pick one here. There are these little teeny tiny black bugs. I'm not sure if they're aphids or what, but I sprayed a lot of them off of my chives, but I'm really glad that they're on my chives and not on my tomato plant. So you can see um, it's working here already. So hopefully they'll go away from my chives though too because I really, really love chives. So a little bit of the basics about tomatoes. Okay, um, before we jump into the first tip, let me just say hello to everybody in the chat or see if there's any questions in the chat and then we'll jump right into our very first tip. And I, hear, I see a question here from Abby. How close can you plant the companion plants to the tomatoes? Well, I don't know that there's really a hard and fast rule. I tend to plant my, um, like my basil and my chives pretty close together. So if you guys can see here, these chives are growing not even maybe a foot um, 
next to this tomato plant, but you can definitely plant them closer, even six inches or so apart. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, they might shade out, your tomato plants might shade out your companion plants, but then you have the added benefit of having the, um, have, of having your companion plants repel the bugs. So you know what I always say, guys, just experiment, try a couple different things and see what works well for you. And Mikey, yes, I absolutely love chives on baked potatoes. Super, super good. Fresh landscape, um, no, you cannot get Smart Pots at Home Depot. I, um, you can get them at, there's an Amazon link um, for Smart Pots, that's in the video description. You can head over to smartpots.com where there's links where you can purchase them. They're actually sold in independent garden centers and on my website. I have the five gallon ones and a purple little mini raised bed, although they sold out over the weekend. So I should be getting some more in this weekend, or I mean this week, and my website is calicumgardenandhome.com. Okay, so let's head over for our first tomato tip, and um, this is a good one, and one that if you're new to tomatoes, you might not know, and that is when you're planting your little tomato seedlings in the garden, you want to plant it deep into the ground. And where did my tomato little plant go? I was going to use for my demo. Hold on a second, I'm going to grab it right over here. Okay, guys, sorry about that. Okay, here it is. So this is one of the um, tomatoes that's in my spring garden seed collection. It's called a Mar Globe tomato. And this is a wonderful tomato. It turned out to be really cold tolerant. Um, this is a brand new seedling, but I had another Mar Globe in a, another area of my garden that is still growing over the winter time. So this is a great one to grow if you live um, in an area where you could possibly overwinter your tomatoes. So when you're planting this little tomato seedling, this will probably go out in the next week or so. What you wanna do is plant it deep into the ground because wherever the roots touch the soil, it's or wherever the stem, sorry, touches the soil, it's gonna send out new roots. So if you see here on the stem, there's teeny tiny little hairs on the stem and what those will do when you plant them deep into the ground they will grow roots out and that's going to make for a really sturdy plant so when i plant this in the ground i'm going to try and get my uh, planting hole as deep as i can and plant it up to like the first set of leaves here um, or actually I'll, I'll try and get it as deep as i can even up to the second set of leaves and then what i'll do is pinch off this first little branch and that way it's going to be a much sturdier plant so it'll be able to withstand um, you know the wind we get super windy here in California and um, it will also have lots more roots to be able to take up the nutrients and the water so put it as deeply as you can into your planting hole and I know a lot of people I've never actually done this but a lot of people um, will plant them in a trench I'm sure Cliff, our moderator, is on here. I'm sure he's done this. We'll plant it in a trench and lay it down flat like that, and then the roots will just, you know, go um, deep into the ground. And then after a couple days, your little tomato plant, the top of it, will um, stand upright. So let me know if anyone has ever done trench planting for tomatoes, but it is a super great way to grow lots of tomatoes, and your plant will be healthier, and obviously healthier plants will be able to grow a lot more tomatoes. So let me know here in the chat if any of you have ever tried that. I would love to hear um, how that has worked for you in the past. Okay, question here in the chat from Kathleen. Um, what date did you start the Tiny Tim tomatoes um, right behind you? These actually have been growing indoors um, all winter long and I actually brought them outdoors recently, maybe within the past month or so. I don't know if I have a tag on here with a date, but I want to say I probably started them um, maybe around Christmas time. So I haven't gotten a ton of fruit off, the, off them yet because they've been indoors under grow lights. And you can see here, I don't know if you guys can see these, they are, are fruiting up like crazy just from being outside in the sun. Lots of flowers and lots of fruit. So I would imagine it's going to be loaded down within the next two weeks. Okay, Sally Neeson, great question. Is Mar Globe determinant or indeterminant? Okay, it is officially a, hopefully I, I'm remembering this correctly, it's officially a determinant tomato. However, what I have found is that it grows more like an indeterminant. Um, so I, I think that might be called semi-determinant, but it grows very, very large. Uh, my Mar Globe from last year probably got 10 feet tall. So, I mean, I, to me, it grows more like an indeterminate plant, if that helps at all. So if you have a small space, I wouldn't necessarily recommend a Mar Globe. Um, I would recommend one of these smaller varieties like the Tiny Tim. 
or if you find another determinant variety, just check and see how big the plant gets when you are looking up that variety. Okay, um, you know what, Angela, good point, and I do need to add that onto my um, tomato seed packets. So for those of you that don't know, I do have an online seed store, and this is my tomato um, seed collection. It has five varieties of tomato seeds, and I will add that onto my seed packet um, when we do our next um, little inventory thing. So that way you guys will know if it's indeterminate or um, determinate tomato. So if you wanna grow tomatoes for the very first time, grab one of these over at calicumgardeninghome.com and you can get some seeds planted. So you want to start your tomato seeds if you can indoors four to six weeks about before your last frost date. If you're already past your frost date, get some started. You can put them under grow lights, which is to me the best option to get them off to a fast start. Put them in a sunny window or if you live in a warm climate, you could even um, start some seedlings and place them out in a sunny spot in your yard. Um, I do like to start them, um, however, rather than do it directly in the ground, I know some people do that, but I prefer to start them in a more controlled environment like the peat pellets or little cups with soil. So these actually are Tiny Tim's. I started them five days ago about, and they're already um, sprouting. These are indoors under grow lights on a heat mat. Aren't these cute? It's always fun to see um, brand new little seedlings pop up out of the soil. So I know a lot of you are growing Tiny Tim's as well and have got your spring garden started with me. Okay, let's see. Any other questions here in the chat before we move on to our second tip for growing lots of tomatoes. So rain bee plant and germinating. Hi, how are you doing today? And your question, my heirloom tomato plant isn't growing any tomatoes after the flowers fully bloom, they dry out and fall off the plant. I grew in a mixture of 50 red dirt and 50% compost. I don't know what's wrong. Okay, well, there's so many different things um, that can go on to that your uh, to blossoms will dry out. It could be super hot. They tend to drop off after um, it hits 85 or 90 degrees. Below, um, probably below 50 or even in the 40s at night, um, your tomatoes are not going to thrive. So hopefully the weather will be warming up or cooling off depending on where you live. And we're gonna get to some tips on what to do in hot weather in just a moment. And your tomatoes will start producing. But of course, I always say plant backups. And that's why I have these little Tiny Tim seedlings planted right here. Because when this one is done, I wanna have other Tiny Tims to take their place. And Max coming out here to join me on the live stream as well. Um, so let's move on to tip number two. Tip number one is plant, plant your tomato plants deep. Tip number two is consistent watering and feeding. Now this might seem like it's an obvious thing, but it is important that along with consistent watering, you also feed your plants an organic fertilizer. And the reason why consistent watering, we'll talk about that one first, is important to grow a lot of tomatoes is because when you're watering inconsistently, like you water maybe um, one day and then you forget and then you don't water for another week, um, your tomato plants tend to get blossom end rot. And if you've ever seen um, a tomato or a squash that's kind of soft on the end or brown on the end, um, that's called blossom end rot. And usually it's a result of inconsistent watering or the inability of the plant to take up calcium from the soil, which is also caused by inconsistent watering. So get your plants on a really good watering schedule. I love to do this with drip irrigation and just set my plants um, to go every so often depending on the weather. It's, it's gonna change, your watering schedule will change depending on the weather, depending on how much rain you get, depending on how warm or cold it is. And I've got videos that you can watch that will help you um, determine that. But keep them on a consistent schedule. And also make sure that you fertilize consistently as well, especially when you're growing in containers. So a couple little tips for fertilizing in containers. I like to fertilize my container plants every week to um, 10 days. The in-ground plants can be fertilized about once a month. And I like to use um, Vermisteria worm castings, uh, worm tea, good dirt plant food. You can always use compost and um, just keep it on a consistent schedule because plants are like us. They need to be refueled with some food just like we do. Um, and then you're gonna be able to grow a lot of tomatoes. So especially in containers, don't expect to just plant it and forget it. You've gotta pay attention to it. Make sure it has consistent watering and consistent feeding to grow a lot of tomatoes. So a lot of people ask me, what, how do you get your plants to look so good? 
how are you get them to be so productive? And that's because I try and keep everything on a very consistent schedule. So whether you write it on your calendar, set yourself a reminder on your phone, whatever you do to um, help you just keep it consistent and you'll be amazed at the difference it will make in how many tomatoes you're able to grow um, on your tomato plants. So let me just see if I missed anything on that particular tip and then we'll head into the chat. Oh, I wanted to um, mention a video also that will really help you out. It's called um, a two minute tip, uh, how to grow lots of tomatoes. And uh, Christy or Cliff, one of you, I forget who's posting the links today, will post a link in the chat and it'll also, the link for that video will also be in the um, video description once the live stream uploads um, to YouTube. Okay, let's see what questions are in the chat. And Sharon Vegas, I can't find any worm tea in my area. You can order it online at vermistera.com. Um, that's the kind I've used. I use, I've used it for, I wanna say four or five years. And in my opinion, it's the best out there on the market. Um, so go to their website. A lot of times they do have discounts on shipping or free shipping over a certain amount of purchase i'm not sure what that is so look at their website and you can use i have a code you can use for 10 percent off it's cali kim and a little bit goes a long way and i i have a ton of it um or i show how to use it in a ton of my videos so you can go back and um check those out okay let's see here um how are you supposed to, how often from mikey cardenas how often are you supposed to water tomato starts Great question, Mikey. I think watering is probably one of the areas where new gardeners get tripped up. I think it's probably the most asked question I get is how often to water, when do I water, how do I water? And in fact, I have a video on the Spring Garden series that we filmed maybe a month or so ago on exactly that topic. So you can go back and um, look up the Spring Garden series on my playlist, Mikey. It'll show you exactly what to do, okay? But just a little quick overview is, can you see here guys how the top of the soil here is a dark brown? That's a really good indication that there's a good moisture content already in these seedlings and I don't need to water them. So keep an eye on it when it changes to a light brown color. That's one of the clues that they're starting to dry out and that you need to water them. And what I do to water these is I pour the water in the bottom of the tray here, right here. And then, um, or if you have little cups with soil, you wanna do the same thing. Water from the bottom, it's a healthier way to water. You're not gonna disturb your seedlings. And then it will, um, the bottom of the little cups you have your, your tomatoes growing in or the pellets will just soak it up and um, water them um, very effectively. It also helps avoid uh, the water splashing and avoiding diseases. But go back and watch those videos for all of the details. Okay, another question in the chat, and then we'll head back over and talk about the next tomato tip. We have three more tips to get through, so I guess I better get moving, right? Okay, um, fresh landscape, question about picking off flowers off my tomatoes. Okay, I, the only um, time I do that is if for some reason my tomato plant is flowering when it's pretty small. So this is a, a pretty young seedling. It was started maybe a month ago and transplanted in here about a week or two ago. Um, if it started to develop flowers at this point, I would pinch the flowers off because I want all the energy to go into the plant getting taller. This plant needs to be a, a little stronger and a little sturdier before it gets planted out in the garden. If it has flowers on it right now, then it's not gonna get as tall and as big. So I would pinch the flowers off at this point. But once it's planted out in my garden, and it's grown a foot or two, I'm not gonna pinch the flowers off anymore because at that point, um, I want it to start producing fruit. So that's just my preference. Maybe some of others of you out there have tried um, different things, but um, that's what I like to do. Okay, next tip here for growing lots of tomatoes is prune them as they grow. And I'm gonna qualify that in, um, in just a moment here. But the reason why you wanna prune your tomato plants, and I do um, just prune my indeterminate plants. Those are the plants that grow large, the vining plants that are eight to 10 feet tall. But the reason why I wanna prune this as it grows is because you want a lot of airflow under your plant. So if you've got a ton of branches coming out the bottom, um, tomatoes are really prone to disease, especially when they don't have a lot of airflow, when the bottom leaves get too wet, the disease tends to start from the bottom and then work their way up the plant. So what I'm gonna do once I get this planted in the ground is I'm gonna prune the bottom leaves off of my plant. And as it grows, I'm gonna keep the bottom uh, six to eight inches 
um, clean and clear from um, the growth under here. And that'll really help it prevent diseases and prevent um, and give it more airflow. Now, again, that is just on the indeterminate type of tomatoes. The determinate tomatoes, you don't want to do a lot of heavy pruning because they're smaller plants. And then if you prune it a lot on the bottom here, can you see this plant here? It's really not pruned on the bottom. If you prune it too much, you're not gonna get as much, as much production out of it because it does grow for a limited time. So qualifying that to prune your um, indeterminate plants, prune your determinate plants only if it has yellowing or diseased leaves. You wanna take all those yellowing leaves off I think um, I might have some yellow leaves here. No, I, I trimmed these all off the other day. So, you know, if I had some yellow leaves on these plants, I would definitely prune it off because that's an indication that um, there's some disease or something going on with the plant. I would trim those off, but otherwise on determinant plants, the smaller varieties of tomatoes, I'm not gonna prune those. So prune to grow yourself lots of tomatoes, and you can go back and watch a video I have on that called, um, how to grow tomatoes from seed to harvest. It's my complete growing guide on tomatoes. I compiled um, a lot of my tomato videos into one long form video. And it has just about everything you wanna know on growing tomatoes. So go back and watch that video. It'll give you lots of great information. Or you can just look up tomatoes on my YouTube channel and you'll have so many videos that pop up that'll be a great resource for you to grow a lot of tomatoes in your garden. And then make sure you share that information and with your friends so that they can enjoy growing their own tomatoes too. Okay, lots of questions in the chat here. It's great to see so many people participating. Love it, love it, love it. So many people are enjoying gardening for the very first time and it's really helping a lot of people relieve stress. A lot of people are home um, when they're not used to being home all the time or homeschooling their kids or just worried about what's going on in the world. And I get so many emails lately of people that are saying, thank you so much for sharing um, how to garden because it's really helping me get through those time, this time right now. And I really do appreciate those emails, guys. It helps keep Jerry and I motivated to keep on making the garden content. And please forgive me if I'm not able to email you back. Um, I am absolutely flooded with emails and comments and I try and get back to what I can, but I'm just not able to get back to everyone. So please be patient and um, do, do your own research and experiment and try things on your own as well. And always go to our YouTube channel and search the topic you're interested in and you might just find your answer. So yeah, it's great to see so many people here today. We have 524 people I'm seeing online. So thanks so much for taking time out of your Monday to join me. Okay, let's see. Um, Kara, can you grow tomatoes in plastic pots? You absolutely can. You can grow tomatoes in whatever you want. I don't myself prefer to grow in plastic pots because I'm finding that I have to continually transplant them because they get root bound very easily in plastic pots because they're large plants. Um, that's why I really prefer to grow in the smart pots, which are um, a very reasonable way to grow in containers, the fabric containers, and they're very, very durable as well. Okay, let's see here. Um, thank you, Angela, hit the like button, I appreciate it. Uh, let's see, Hannah, is fertilizer necessary or can I get by without a ton of it? Funds are very limited, I absolutely understand that, Hannah. One thing you can do to make your own fertilizer is make yourself some compost. You don't have to have a lot of space to make compost, you can compost in a container this size. And I have a video on how to compost in a five gallon container. Go back and watch that. You can have your own compost in about six to eight weeks. Um, and then look for very inexpensive ways to um, fertilize. A lot of people um, have mentioned soaking banana peels in water to help uh, fertilize your plants. Um, there's also a very inexpensive fertilizer called fish fertilizer you can purchase at most hardware stores. Um, the worm tea, um, it's a little, you know, a little pricier, but a little bit goes a long way and you're gonna see a huge um, benefit to your tomato plants. The Good Dirt plant food is also very inexpensive as well and you can find that at good-dirt.com and there's links to all that in the video description. Okay, let's see. Um, JB, I covered your question in the beginning of the live stream. Yes, you absolutely can. So go back and watch the beginning to um, find out which are the best varieties to plant. Um, glam cakes. Hi, Kim. What to do about spider mites and white flies? Okay. 
I always have a ton of white flies at this time of the spring and we've had a lot of rain lately. So um, I do have a lot of them in my garden right now. I usually don't worry too much about the white flies. Um, they don't seem to do a lot of damage. The spider mites though do a lot of damage. Um, they can really affect the growth of your plant and um, really stunt, stunt the growth. So spider mites are super teeny tiny little bugs. Sometimes you can't even see them with your eye, but you'll see if you see spots on your plants, little tiny white spots, that's usually an indication that you have spider mites. And what I like to do is, number one, I try and uh, spray my plants off with water um, at the very first sign of trouble, which is what I did right back here with my chives this morning. They were covered in little black bugs, like I showed you at the beginning of the video. So I spray them off with water first to kind of wash them off, give them a fresh start. And then I really like to use um, neem oil, a combination of neem oil and peppermint oil. It's an organic uh, method of pest control, and I get all of my um, pest control oils from Gary at The Rusted Garden, so you can check out his website as well. A great resource, therustedgarden.com. He also just sent me some rosemary oil, which I'm gonna use for the first time this year, but it's an organic um, pesticide that really helps um, disrupt the life cycle of the neem oil is the organic pesticide that helps disrupt the life cycle of the chewing and sucking insects. And look up neem oil on my YouTube channel for a video on how to spray or how to spray with that. Peppermint and rosemary, the bugs um, don't like the scent of it, so it repels them from your plants. So lots of videos on how to deal with that, uh, but it really is my uh, favorite thing to to use. Okay, let's see. Can you show us your watermelon seeds and the cucumbers? I don't have those seeds collections out here with me. Um, you can go back and watch my video that I posted on that a couple weeks ago and see um, how I planted those. But they are growing like crazy. They're inside under grow lights and I'll be bringing them outside probably within the next couple weeks and hopefully doing an update video on them um, very soon. Okay, so let's go into our tip number four. Okay, first tip, remember guys, is plant your tomato plants deep into the ground. Tip number two is consistent watering and feeding to grow lots of tomatoes. Tip number three is prune as they grow. And tip number four is hand pollinate, okay? Did you know that you can actually hand pollinate your tomatoes to have lots and lots of tomatoes? And it's not even that hard. It'll take you like 10 seconds, if that. And here's how you do it. You don't have to get the little paint brushes out or the little Q-tips and um, pollinate with a paintbrush or a Q-tip. All you have to do, it's so easy, is shake your plants. Okay, once you see the flowers start to appear, just come by and shake your plants like that, just give them a little shake whenever you walk by. And what that does is it moves the pollen around. Now, tomato um, flowers have both male and female parts. So when you move the pollen around, it really just helps hand pollinate them, shake your plants to really help them grow more tomatoes. So simple little tip, all you have to do is take a walk through your garden and jiggle your plants a little bit and you'll be amazed at the difference that it makes. So I want you guys to try that this week if you have any tomato flowers and it's especially helpful if you're growing them inside like I was this plant. I actually did that um, during the winter time is I would just shake my little plant here because of course there's no bees inside. Outside they'll, they'll do the work for you but you can help them out a little bit by walking around your garden and just shaking your plants. Now if anybody sees you out there they might think you're crazy but what does it matter as long as you're growing a lot of tomatoes, right? So let me hear in the chat if any of you have ever tried that before and I want to hear your results as well. Okay, let's see here. Tiffany, thank you so much. Tiffany, um, highly recommend my book. There are so many tips and tricks in there. Amazing. Thank you so much, Tiffany. Whoops, just knocked my water over. I really appreciate it. And yes, there is a lot of information about tomatoes, guys. A whole section on how to plant them. Um, lots of information here, organic gardening for everyone. So you can grab this over on my website. And I do offer um, a special when you purchase the Spring Garden Seed Collection and my book. There's lots of little bundles over there to help you save money. Um, you get $5 off when you purchase the Spring Garden Seeds and the book bundle. I also have a new thing on there. Um, it's a salad in a container kit uh, with the book. So you can go over there and check it out and lots of good tomato tips um, in here. So thank you so much, Tiffany, for mentioning that. I appreciate it. I'm so glad that it's been helpful. Okay, Andrea says she always shakes her pepper plants. Andrea, that's great. I've never done that with my pepper plants, so I'm gonna try that too. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that's worked for you. 
um, yeah, Nisha hand pollinate uh, tomatoes. Yeah, it's it's really kind of a fun thing to do. Monica tickle the tomato flowers. Yeah, that's great. Um, Rita, good question here. We are good comment. Rita, yellow sticky traps for white flies. Um, if you like beneficial insects, check out the website Nature's Control. Thank you so much, Rita. I appreciate that. Yeah, beneficial insects are a great thing to have in your garden as well. And I would really love to um, get more into that. So I'll have to do some research. I did try bringing in ladybugs one time, but um, they didn't stick around for too long. <laughs> so I, that, I think that would be really fun to do that. Okay, Monica, can I plant an indeterminate tomato in a 10 gallon pot? Um, yes, I would I would say depending on the variety, but yeah, I would go ahead and do an indeterminate in a 10 gallon. The more you can the bigger you can get, the better. A 20 gallon is even better because the more soil that the tomato plant has, the more roots it's gonna grow, the more productive, the more tomatoes you're gonna grow. But a 10 gallon um, would be sufficient. You might not get as much though as if you planted one in a 20 gallon pot. But you know what? Give it a go. And I never want, uh, you know, something like a limited pot size to be, uh, to stop you from growing tomatoes. Okay, Cypress Figueroa, does the neem and peppermint oil also deter the beneficials? Okay, no, the, um, the neem oil, how that works is it coats the leaves of your plants. So only um, insects that chew on the leaves will be affected by it. So the beneficials um, don't chew on the leaves. They mainly go around and are predators to the non-beneficials. So it won't be an issue for that. I do spray though early in the morning before the bees are out. Um, it doesn't harm the bees, but I don't like to spray anything directly on the bees. So get out there early. Um, you don't want to spray it in direct sunlight. Um, so definitely get out there early. A day like today is perfect because it's cloudy. And also, um, I was going to mention one other thing, but I forgot it. So <laughs> just go back and check out the videos um, on how to do that. Okay, Nisha, I'm glad I'm not the only one the, whose ladybugs um, flew away. Okay, we have a special guest out here to say hello. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you guys guess who it might be? <laughs> Camera uh, guy and Mac. Hey everybody, how's Mac? it going? Oh, I don't think we can see Mac, but... Just um, wanted to come out and say hi real quick. Say hi to everyone. Hope you guys are all getting in your gardening uh, going there and uh, hope you're all doing well. Yep, had a good weekend. We were working hard inside putting together all the seed collections, all the seed orders that came yes. in over the weekend. Hey, so everyone. Jerry and Drew are inside doing that while I'm out here streaming. Yes. So. Uh -huh. And we got a big Ooh. box of Smart Pots <gasps> that just came in. Oh my goodness. I was just telling everyone how we're completely Thank sold you. out. So you guys want to check after this, I'll go and open up the Smart Pots box Hi, and put them back in stock on my website. And I think that's just the purple ones. So the black ones hopefully will be here later in the week. So make sure you check back guys if they're out of stock. Check back later in the week. Hang on, hang oh, on. Oh, here comes oh, Mac. Look at <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Here's Mac. I don't, He's I don't not think he, it. he does not like being held too much. <laughs> He's too big for that. <laughs> All right, bye guys. See you later. Thanks for coming out. Say hi. See ya. <laughs> okay, so let's see. I'm trying to think where we were. Oh, we were just talking about hand pollinating and there were a bunch of questions flying by. Um, I saw someone say, do you make your seed collections at your house? And we put them all together right here. We are a family, <clears throat> excuse me, a family owned and family run business. And um, yes, we do it all here in house and we send them out to you as fast as we can. Although these days it does take a little bit longer because so many of you are wanting to garden, but that's okay. I am so happy that so many people are growing right now. <clears throat> Thank you, egocentric. Yeah, Mac really enjoys um, making appearances in our videos. Okay, let's talk about, excuse me, let me grab a drink. Let's talk about tip number five, and this is especially gonna come in handy for those of you that um, live in California, because as I mentioned, we are getting a crazy heat wave this week. It's gonna be in the 90s for a couple of days later in the week, so I'm getting ready right now to do this. So tip number five is shade your tomato plants in temperatures over 85. And that is 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Sorry, I don't know what that is, um, Celsius. But, and the reason for that is, um, once it gets over 85, 90 degrees, most plants don't like that too much. Their production really slows down. And a lot of times you're gonna get blossom drop. The blossoms <clears throat> will just dry right up and you'll see them dropping off your tomato plants, your pepper plants, 
cucumbers and squash a lot of times will drop blossoms as well <clears throat> but no worries what you can do is shade your plants and i totally forgot to bring a piece of shade cloth here with me i meant to show you guys but i will put a link in the video description if you've never used shade cloth basically what it is it's a cloth um, that you can grab on Amazon is where I usually get mine. It has little tiny little holes in it, but it still does allow some of the sunlight to get through, but it blocks out some of the intense sun rays and it really does help keep your plants cooler in a heat wave. Um, you know, even when you're just getting a couple of days of hot weather, it really, really helps to uh, protect those blossoms and also the tomatoes from drying up and falling off. So definitely use shade cloth in a heat wave. The cloth that I use has about a 60% block, which means it will block about 60% of the sun's rays. And I feel like that's been really effective in the hot summers we get here. We have lots and lots of days over 90, lots of days over 100, and it really does help keep your tomato production going in the heat. So I highly recommend that. I am gonna be shading a, as much as I can of my uh, heat sensitive plants, which is most of when it gets over 90, um, over the next um, couple of days to protect it from the heat wave. So it just really helps uh, the leaves also from getting scorched and we'll just give it that little extra layer of protection so they keep on producing so um oh but what you want to do as soon as the temperatures drop down below 85 is you want to take the shade cloth off you only need it when the temperatures are um, super hot like that so if you can if it's at all possible for you to, to do that just angle your, what i do guys for my shade cloth is i'm, I'm going to keep it super simple I'm just gonna drape it over my tomato cage here. I don't make a permanent structure for my shade cloth. I just drape it over. I put stakes in the ground and then I clip it onto the stake so it just makes a nice little covering. Um, if you don't have shade cloth or access to it, you can use an old sheet um, to cover it for a couple of days. It's not gonna let the sunlight through, but it's definitely better than um, your tomato plant burning up. So um, do what you can, keep it simple. And you may not be able to shade your whole entire garden, but maybe you can shade your favorite plant, a couple of your favorite plants to help keep it producing. Okay, let me see if I had anything else. Oh, what I was gonna say is if you can, angle your cloth so it gets morning sun, which of course is the coolest, and it's shaded from the heat of the day. So, um, you know, depending on where your garden is situated, you can kind of angle your cloth to help it get the, the best, coolest sunrise, sun rays on a really hot day. So those are my five tips. Number one, let's see if I can remember them all. Number one, um, plant your tomato plants deep into the ground. Number two, make sure you're consistent with your watering and fertilizing, really important. Number three, prune your plants as they grow. That is your indeterminate tomatoes. Number four, hand pollinate by shaking your tomato cages. And number five, shade in temperatures over 85 degrees Fahrenheit. So those are my five tips for the day. Back into the chat now for your questions. Got a few more minutes of the live stream left. It is really great to see, oh my goodness, I just looked at the count, almost 700 people here. How exciting, you guys. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I don't wanna think about how many people are out there because I'll get nervous, but I'm just talking to my phone right now and reading um, all the comments in the chat. This is so much fun. Okay, the Crystal Palace, how are you doing? Something I found, if a plant does get scorched, normally a house plant, if you bring it into the house and give it special love and carefully remove the burnt, it will grow back. Great point, Crystal Palace. Usually your plants will, will recover unless they are completely burned up and scorched and not, and not watered in the heat. A lot of times, um, again, you can prune off the damaged leaves, give it a special little boost, <clears throat> some TLC, um, give it a little plant boost. The, the worm tea is a great little plant boost because it's really a gentle fertilizer. So it's not gonna cause a sudden burst of growth, but it'll help it be healthy <clears throat> and give it some good beneficial um, bacteria and help it be healthy in the long run. So yes, definitely baby your um, plants in the heat. And of course, make sure you keep them well watered. Okay, um, questions here. Um, Gerald Kelly, anything other than neem oil? Um, you can use, I mentioned, just spraying your plants off with water. Um, a lot of people have used a soapy dish soap spray, but do be very careful um, with the amounts that you put in. Um, I have videos that you can go back and watch on that. And always, 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 
always, always do a test spray on a few plants first because if you see damage on a couple of your leaves, or not on a few plants, but on a few of the leaves, if you see damage on the leaves after 24 hours or so, you can make an adjustment on the amount of soap that you're using or amount of neem oil or whatever type of spray that you're using um, because different sprays um, are, have different types of potencies, so you always wanna test those kind of things first. Okay, thank you so much, Rita. Congrats on nearly 700 viewers. This is exciting. <laughs> thank you. I have some water right here. Um, I just need to take a drink. <laughs> okay, Lucas grows best. What is your favorite beef steak to grow? Well, there is a classic beef steak variety, which is in my tomato seed collection. It's the good old classic. That one's always a great one. One of my favorites um, last year was the Golden Jubilee. It's a beautiful orange tomato. I always am very partial to orange tomatoes. Um, a big, nice slicing beef steak. I grew another one that I really liked. I'm trying to remember the name of it. Um, it's, it was a, uh, a wild boar farms variety, and I can't remember the name of it. I'll have to look it up, but it's really, really pretty. In fact, it's reminding me I need to start some more seeds for that as well, but there's so many beautiful varieties out there. Um, I tend to like to grow um, different colors of tomatoes, so if you're, if you're like that, um, you know, pick yourself out some beautiful colors and give it a go. Okay, Bass Masty, do you use aspirin spray? If so, when do you start? I did use it for one year or one year and I didn't see a ton of difference, but it's not to say that it doesn't work. I know a lot of gardeners use it and really swear by it. So um, if I was gonna do that, I would start when the tomato plant is very young, like the one I just showed you. It's right off camera here. But um, I would start as soon as I put it in the garden. And it, a lot of people like to even put an aspirin in the planting hole, a crushed up aspirin. And then I would start maybe a week or two later as a preventative measure. And it is important that you use preventative measures before things get out of hand because it's a lot easier to prevent something than it is to control an infestation. Okay, um, setting up my first grow light and restarting seeds. Wonderful, Pamela. So proud of you. It's it's just such a joy to see those little tiny seedlings start. And the Crystal Palace, nothing better than a garden tomato sandwich. Yes, those are absolutely delicious. I love garden grilled cheese. They're so good with the orange tomatoes, a nice white sharp cheddar, and a really crusty sourdough bread is, oh, it's just about the most delicious thing you can possibly have. Okay, let's see, Nicole up potting at Cali Kim California Wonder Peppers, one of my favorite varieties, Nicole, from my pepper seed collection. It's also in the spring garden seed collection. Um, let's see, okay, something is eating my eggplant from Nisha. What should I do growing it for the first time? Okay, Nisha, um, try all the pest control methods I just mentioned. It's really hard to say what's eating it without actually, or you know, if you don't know what's eating it, sometimes it's hard to know what to do, but spray it off gently with water. If you can figure out what it is, that really helps, but definitely try um, the other insect control methods that I already mentioned. Eggplant, a lot of times flea beetles, or teeny tiny little beetles. In fact, that might be what's on my chives, I'm not sure. They're little teeny tiny beetles and they do tend to flock to eggplant. Okay, Game Nerd Mom, hard to get garden supplies right now. Yes, I hear you. Any alter alternative mulches I can use? Okay, the mulch, my mulch of choice, which is my favorite, and it's totally free, is shredded leaves. So I collect as many leaves as I can in the fall. I have a couple friends that collect them for me. Um, I use them for my compost, and then I mulch with them all summer long. So if you have access to leaves, I know at this time of the year it might be kind of hard. Um, but you can also use straw. Straw is a, a great mulch to use as well. Um, you might be able to find that at your local like feed supplies. It's very inexpensive. So if you can't get your hands on some leaves, which is my mulch of choice, see if you can find yourself a couple bales of straw and then go from there. No, I don't use the colored mulch um, that you get at the garden center. Um, it has chemicals and things like that in it. I will use, um, if they have a natural type of wood mulch, like the cedar bark or something like that, I would, I would use that. I prefer to use that on my walkways. Um, and if you do use that on your garden beds, only put it on the top. Don't mix it into the garden soil because it can tend to rob your soil of nitrogen. So that's um, a possibility. 
Okay, great question here from Connie. How far apart do we need to plant indeterminate tomato plants? Thank you. You're welcome, Connie. Um, I cover all that in my book, Connie, but generally as a rule of thumb, I will plant my tomato plants about two feet apart, the indeterminate ones, because they're really, really large plants and they need two to three feet apart. They need a lot of room to grow. Um, you're always gonna wanna stake your indeterminate tomato plants. I forgot to mention that. Um, you wanna stake them with, you could just use a regular old garden steak like this one, although I would go with a, a stronger one, or you can use a tomato cage, which is my preference. And um, I have lots of videos on different types of tomato cages that you can use, a lot of good DIY ones. In fact, I have a really great DIY one, one of my favorite super, super sturdy tomato cages right over here. It's got, see all those yellow peas growing on it right now? Um, and I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's made out of, um, concrete remesh and I have a video on how to do that. It's very, very easy to make, very inexpensive, probably will cost you under $10 and you can easily grow a 10 foot tomato in that cage. Um, and it's so inexpensive. So you can get to a hardware store to get yourself a couple pieces of concrete remesh, highly recommended for a really sturdy tomato cage. Okay, let's do maybe one or two questions. And this has been a ton of fun. I can't believe we're streaming for almost an hour. Usually I go about 35 to 40 minutes, but tomatoes are a great topic and lots and lots of questions on that. Okay, what kind of tomatoes do you recommend? There's so many out there. Um, I grow, of course, all the ones in my seed collections and I always recommend those first because those are my favorites. You can head over to my um, website and check out the tomato seed collection. The Spring Garden Seed Collection also has some, which is a really good basic collection to start with. Um, and yeah, I see a lot of you are commenting about the dove or the owl. I'm not sure what that is, if it's a dove or an owl. Whatever it is, it's beautiful. We hear it out here all the time. And in fact, I was talking to my mom on the phone the other day out here and she could hear it too, even over the phone. So it's really a really uh, peaceful, calming sound. Okay, let's see, maybe one more question here. Here's a good one from Joan. This is actually a question, sorry, my camera's wiggling around here. When is the best time to water, morning or evening? Okay, oh, I see that we had a super chat too that I missed. I'll go back to that in just a second. Sorry about that. Um, I pre myself prefer to water in the morning. I wouldn't say there's a hard and fast rule, but I like to water in the morning, early, early in the morning, just because it gives the tomato plants or your garden, not just tomato plants, um, the water that it needs to um, make it through the day. So, um, you know, you definitely don't want to water in the middle of the day, especially when it's hot out. When it's weather like this, 65, cloudy, it doesn't really matter. But if it's hot out, um, you know, the water is just going to evaporate. So you can do emergency watering in the middle of the day. That's not a problem. Like if your container's really dried out and things are really droopy. But as a general rule of thumb, I like to water early in the morning and I have my drip irrigation set to run, I think at like four or five in the morning, I believe. Okay, um, Helen, do you use your veggie pot? I absolutely do. I have a lot planted in it right now, actually. You might be able to see it if I turn my camera around. It's over there next to my fence. I have some kale and some tiny Tim tomatoes planted in it right now. And I kind of planted, I planted kale in it as kind of a holding place for the kale until I can plant it out somewhere else. I want to plant kale in my strawberry towers, um, but it's growing beautifully in there and the veggie pod's a great way to grow as well. Okay guys, this has been so much fun. I can't believe we're going for almost an hour here. So much fun, 740 viewers. Actually on my screen it says 762, so this is a ton of fun. Um, I forgot to ask Camera Guy if we're gonna live stream again this Friday, but I'm assuming that we are. So please join us for our Friday fireside. It's more of a casual kind of hangout type of thing. We don't cover you know a specific garden topic, but I do answer a lot of questions from the chat. And we, we chat, uh, we, we have our little live stream right there. See those little blue, those are, that's a fire pit right there, those blue rocks. We live stream right in front of that. It's a really fun kind of intimate type of time. And I encourage people, gather your family around, grab some snacks, grab your favorite favorite bre be beverage. <laughs> See, I've been talking a lot. Um, grab your kids and just hang out with us. I mean, what better do we have to do right now, right? But hang out on a Friday night, staying at home. So hang out with us. It's gonna be Friday, 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. And I think that's 8.30 Eastern time. So it'll be a ton of fun. And I really wanna thank you guys for joining us. Um, we are gonna be posting some videos this week as well on heat what to do in heat. Oh yeah, the super chat. I missed that. 
Christy or Cliff, did you happen to see who that's from? I don't know if I can get that back. Um, let me scroll back and see. I'm so sorry I missed it. Um, but thank you to whoever that was. I really appreciate your support. And I'm scrolling back here to see if I can find it. But if it happened way earlier in the live stream, I might not be able to see it. But thank you. I appreciate so much your support. We appreciate everyone's support here. And we're looking forward. Is Matt going to come down? Oh. We're looking forward to seeing you guys on the Friday Fireside Chat. All right. Thanks so much for joining me today, guys. Hope you enjoyed the tomato tips. Oh, Grace Holland. Okay. My goodness, Grace. So sorry I, mi I missed it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right, guys. Have a great week. See you later. Bye-bye.